Yes, hello, good morning. Uh, our topic for today is about the 10 endangered bird species in the Philippines. So before we proceed in our in our in my blog, uh, may konti lang akong panawagan sa mga for all those breeders and bird keepers like us because we belong birds of the same feather, belong to the same feather duster as they said. So ito yung panawagan ko. Guys, please stop catching bird from wild and selling them. Please. We are bird keepers, we are breeders. For those for those making a living in in that way, I hope you stop it and try to find another type of work. And for those who have money also, please stop buying. One one time I I saw in our in our groups in Mindanao especially there's somebody displaying this kind of bird this kind of bird and somebody is buying it do not patronize it please so the essential of the birds in our guys this is it our our environment is very fast diminishing and birds birds are one who helped propagating the seeds in our trees. When there's no trees, there's no oxygen. Trees are synthesizing the oxygen that we breathe. Simple as that. So, if you cannot be a part of the solution, so please don't be a part of the problem. So, now I will proceed in my, in our blog, the 10 most endangered species in the Philippines. Actually, species, they, they correct me with that. <laughs> okay, Shokran. So guys, these are the 10 endangered bird species of the Philippines. So let's begin with our vlog for today. So the number one is the Visayan Hornbill or Penelopedes Panini. It's a hornbird found in the rainforest of the island of Panay, Negros, Masbate, and Guimaras. Formerly Tikau in the Philippines. Guimaras? Guimaras? Okay. So, it's formerly included in the Philippine Tarictic Hornbills as subspecies. This Tarictic Hornbills, we call, we call this in our local dialect as Tagitic. Of which case, common name as combined species with shortened to Tarictic, Tarictic Hornbill. The adults show sexual dimorphism as as you can show as, as you can see in the picture. The male is have creamy white head and creamy white uh, here white creamy white in the upper chest while the female is uh, only black. And the creamy white buff tail with a broad black tip. The bill of the bill and cask cask of the ano ba to casco Casco to sa amin eh. uh, The black is a former with yellowish ridges. Dito sa uh, uh, this uh, big portion of the tagitic bird hornbill, the male have uh, blackish stripes. But otherwise, the plumage of the female is black and the ocular skin is blue. So if you can see the the eye part and the here in the neck part of the female is bluish. So, our number two is the Mindoro Hornbill. There's no, there's no actual picture of the Mindoro Hornbill. So, uh, Pelinopedis mindarensis. It's the same feature with the uh, Tagitic Hornbill. It's, it's almost the same. But the location, the location and the, the, develop, the, the feature of this bird is a slight different from the Tagitic as per according to the place uh, where they are located. It is endemic to the forest of Mindoro in the Philippines, as in the case of uh, all the Philippine Taritic Hornbill, it has been considered a subspecies of the P. panini, the Mindoro Hornbill. The black and the sexes are very similar, differently primarily in the color and the ocular pinkish white. It's the same, actually it's the same. Blue and is female is threatened by habitat loss. The number one factor, the number one, uh, what's this? 
Yes, the number one factor in losing our species is the habitat loss and over-consuming uh, of our natural resources. It is threatened by habitat loss and it is consequently considered endangered species by the IUCN. It is con uh, considered a uh, frugivore and diet mainly consists of fruits. It's a fruit eater. Uh, by the way, IUCN, for those who did not know, IUCN is in International Union of Conservation and Nature. So, let me drink water first. <coughs> Excuse me, po! So, let's proceed with our number three. Bang! The strict breasted bulbul, uh, Hypsipetes sikihorensis. Uh, Sikihorensis, maybe it can be found in the area of Sikihor. It's a songbird species in the bulbul family. It is endemic in the Philippines, where its natural habitat is subtropical and tropical moist lowlands. Forest and subtropical or subtropical sub moist shrubland. It is threatened also by habita habitat loss. From the scientific name itself, Hycipitis uh, sikihorensis, maybe this bird can be found only in Sikihor. Sikihor is an island in the Philippines. And I went there once upon a time. So our number four bird is the blue wing racket tail of Sulu or Sulu racket tail. Punitorus verticalis. You can easily distinguish this type of bird because the, of the tail. The tail have a two long uh, racket shape or uh, two long elongate, uh, two long feathers protruding in the tail. It is endemic to the Tawi-Tawi Island in the Philippines. Mainly dark green in plumage, uh, on back and olive green on the breast and belly. Male birds have pale blue with small red patch on the forehead. So this have a small red, red patch in the forehead for the males. They do not have a red spot in their foreground. The, the primary feathers blue in the outer webs while the middle tail feathers green. Rocky tails black tink with blue. Their side tail feathers and green tip black. Uh, I have another blog also discussing about the parrot species in the Philippines. There are many subspecies of the rocky tail found in the in the nearby areas of the Tawi Tawi. Tawi Tawi is uh, ne near Malaysia. So let's proceed to our number five. Our number five is the white throated jungle fly catcher, Vauriella abigularis. It is a species of bird, an old world fly catcher. It is endemic to the Philippines. Sad to say that these birds are easily, uh, their numbers are fast diminishing. The natural habitats of the white-throated jungle flycatcher are the tropical moist lowlands, the tropical moist mountain forest, and is threatened by, threatened by the habitat loss. Mountain forest, there are no, sad to say, friends, that our, our forests in the Philippines are also fast diminishing. Uh, sad. Excuse me, I will eat my uh, dates. So, snacks while having a blog. So anyway, let's proceed to our number six in our list. The Negro Strip Bubbler, Zosterorsis negro, Negrorum. It's a species of bird in the family of Zortipropidae. Once again, why well, it's very difficult to pronounce scientific names. <laughs> and it is endemic to the Negros Island. This bird is tall, 
Ituto pala ito na ibo na ito. Kumusta ka na dyan to? Eh, supuntahan ti kao. This bird is ilonggo. It is a natural habitat and subtropical or subtropical uh, moist maintained forest. And once again, it is threatened by habitat loss. Wow, this number seven in our list is a beautiful. Flame uh, Temple Bubbler, the Cicroptapia speciosa, is a species of bird in the family of Zortopidae. It's bubbler. Genus the Cicrotapia. It's endemic to the Philippines in the island of Panay and Negros. It's the same. It's Toto. It's Ilonggo. It's natural habitat and a subtropical of tropical forest. It's threatened also by habitat loss. You know what is the cause for the habitat loss? Humans. Overconsumption of unnatural habitat. Development. Because our... We don't have proper environmental planning in our place. We are not coexisting. So the next in our list is the black shama, Copsico sibuensis. It's a beautiful black bird. <coughs> I think first water. It's a species of bird in the family of Mosimpasidae. It is endemic to the island of Cebu. I hope this bird is still exists in Cebu right now. Where in Cebu? Cebu is a very big island. In natural habitat are subtropical and tropical moist lowlands, subtropical and tropical moist shrubland and plantations. It has been sighted in several locations across islands of the most important sites being Cebu, protecting landscape, forest in Alcoy, Argao and the Shabran of Kasili. Uh, Consolation, it is uh, also uh, threatened by habitat loss. Because Cebu right now is a very developed uh, area. The next in our list is the Luzon Water Red Star. It is a small bird. Uh, Puniculus by color. It is a species of bird in the family of Mesopidae. It is endemic to the Philippines. Its natural habitat are subtropical or tropical moist lowland forest, subtropical or tropical moist mountain forest, and rivers. Once again, it is threatened by uh, threatened by habitat loss. Every animal in our country is threatened by habitat loss, threatened by the development. Because there's no coexisting programs between development and uh, the native flora and fauna in the area. So our nine number ten in our list is the Mindanao Bleeding Heart or Galicumba Crinigera. So it's a beautiful colorful bird also known as the Barlitz Bleeding, Bleeding Heart Dove, Barlitz Bleeding Heart Pigeon and the Hare Breasted Bleeding Heart. It is a species of bird in the pigeon family. It is endemic to the Philippines, about 29 cm in length and weight about 184 to 204 gram. The forehead crown and the nape mantle is metallic green. Wow, it's, it's, she have beautiful color. Metallic green and slightly duller in the forehead <coughs> and the side of the head and the back of the rump. Back of the rump here is a chocolate brown and fringes of green. Upper central tail covers pearlish brown and the throat have white. Most striking is the blood red patch on the breast. Uh, this is the name of the bird came from, the bleeding heart. So, I have one bonus. I don't think so that this Rufus hornbill belong to the endangered species or belong to the critically endangered species. Because in the list of our, in our list of 2004, the Rufus Hornbill is not included in the, in the, what's this? Critically endangered or endangered species. But they include there in the list some birds that not, that not uh, endemic in the Philippines. 
So the Rufus Hornbill is, uh, he looks like the Taruk Makto in the movie of Avatar. Uh, Buceros Hydrocorax, it is known as the Philippine Hornbill. Locally as known Kalau, pronounced Kalau. It is a large species of hornbill. It is endemic to the Philippines where it occurs in primary, mature, secondary, and disturbed forest on 11 islands. Luzon, Marinduque, Samar, Leyte, Bohol, Biliran, Kalikuan, Buad, Dinagat, Siargao, Mindanao, Balot, Bukas, Antalikod. Bukas, Antalikod. Bukas, Grande, Antalikod, Indavao. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Bukas, Grande, Antalikod. Maybe this is Indavao, in, in Samal Farm. In, in Samal, in Samal Island. And Basilan. It is still common locally, notably in the Sierra Madre of Luzon. I don't think so that they exist. The Sierra Madre now is... Uh, bald <coughs> but continues to suffer from substantial hunting pressure and wads, widespread loss habitat they are one of the largest birds in the tropical lowland forest it is big as big as, uh, as, as I think it's smaller than a rooster <coughs> I love also this bird It's very beautiful. So, this is the male. This is the male of the Rufus Hornbill. As you can see, the male of the Rufus Hornbill, the difference, because this bird is also, you can identify this bird so easily, uh, of the gender, if, if it's male or female. Look at the cask of the male. versus the cast of the female the the cast of the male is uh have uh, forwarded a little bit uh than the cast of the female the female is up to the half of its beak only but the male is up to three-fourths of the beak and the female have yellow and the female have yellow what's this where's my phone And the uh, female have yellow colored on the beak. On the beak. And if you can see the, the cheek, the cheek have a uh, dark curvy compared to the adult. Compared to the adult and uh, white color. So these are the difference between the male and the female and the cheek of this species. The Rufus Hornbill. Next, I didn't include this, the oriental stork, because these are not endemic to the Philippines. As the name, oriental stork, Sekonya Boshana, Boishana, and the Japanese night heron, Gorsachus, uh, what's this? Gorsachus uh, Goisagi. These are birds are native in Japan, and native in Japan and China, but I don't know what is the reason of the DNA, the way these these birds are included in the these birds are included in the list of endangered species in the Philippines. So next is the Nordman's green shank. This is this is also not uh, native in the Philippines. The Tranga gatifer. The Norman green shank breeds in eastern Russia along the south. Western and northern coast of the Sea of Othox and Sakhalin Island in non-breeding range. These are my migratory birds. They have been recorded in South Korea, mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Passage, and the Bangladesh, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Peninsula, Malaysia, and in winter, it also been recorded the passage in the winter in Japan, North Korea, India, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Proved to be an important part of wintering range, Singapore and the Philippines, and Indonesia. They migrate only in the Philippines when the place is winter. They migrate to breed. So this is the listed species, the endangered listed species on the DNR. So the as uh, as I've shown earlier, the Bisayan Tagitek, Mindoro Hornbill, Strict Breasted Bulbul, uh, Blue Wing Rocketail, Japanese White Stork. See, there's a Japanese White Stork. 
uh, as I've said, I don't know what is the reason of the DIN or why they include the bird species that are migratory in maybe the it will need to upgrade or update this one. Timali Day, uh, Timali Day, Negro Street Bubbler, Fl Flame Temple Bubbler, Black Shama, Luzon Water Red Start, Mindanao Bleeding Heart, Japanese Night Heron, and Nordmar Green Shark. In this list, this, uh, the, the Rufus Hornbill is not included. So, next is the source. The source of our is the DNR Administrative Order 2004-15. Subject establishing the list of terrestrial threatened species and their categories and the list of other wildlife species. Pursuant to the Republic Act Number no. 9147, otherwise known as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act of 2001. <coughs> I didn't see any updated for this one. Maybe when I go home, I will check for this one if there is an uh, updated law regarding the uh, this administrative order. So, under the Public Act Number no. 9147, the Public Act Number no. 147 states that an act providing for the conservation and protection of wildlife resources and their habitats, appropriating funds, therefore, and other purposes. So question can I own uh, can I ha can I own a uh, uh, endangered species this is the answer possession of wildlife no person or entity shall be allowed possession of wildlife unless a person is in or entity can prove financial and technical capability so do you have that do you have a uh, cape Financial, are, are you financial, financially capable <coughs> to provide facility and maintenance? So, uh, I will continue it first. Capability and facility to maintain the said wildlife provided that the source was not obtained in the violation of this act. Provided that you are, did not get it, that's your species, you did not get it from the wild. So, another, uh, the section 9, collection and possession of byproducts, derivatives, number 10, local transport. This is also very important, especially nowadays. So, next, the, so next uh, maybe many of us doesn't know that we are, there are big penalties if somebody will report you or somebody uh will uh, uh, so report you to the authorities. So this is your penalty. Under the Republic Act 9147, the penalty depends not only on the act committed but also in the conservation status of wildlife. The highest penalty are imposed on those guilty of killing critically endangered wildlife term for 6 years and 1 day to 12 years or the payment ranging from 100,000 to 1 million peso. So, uh, now you know. I hope this can help you open your mind regarding the laws uh, bounded in our uh, birds. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much and I hope this is uh, informative blog. Daghang salamat. <laughs>